Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Uh, today's the 31st of January, 2016. Today's the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. St. John's Lutheran Church is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Or we 
Zenical. It does not replace in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for perfect prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophecy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Uh, let us now sing hymn number 676, 
Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Hymn number 676. He has revealed to us what he wants us to do. 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the message of Jesus Christ? What is that message that the world is starving to hear, that people all over the world are begging to hear, that so oftentimes is being covered up or misused? To answer that question, we go back to our gospel lesson for today. Where Jesus is in his hometown of Nazareth, he was given the scroll, he stood up and read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, a messianic passage which said that the Messiah would come. And said that when the Messiah came, he would make the lame walk and the blind see and the deaf hear. He would heal the sick and raise the dead. And yet, the crowd in the synagogue had lost the message of the Messiah. Because they had been influenced by the movements of their day. They had been influenced by the politicians of their day who portrayed the Messiah not as Isaiah portrayed him, but portrayed the Messiah instead as a warrior king like David who would come riding in on a great charger and drive the Romans into the sea and make Judah the new Israel greater than that of King David. And so as Jesus is speaking to them as he continues to speak, whereas at the beginning everything was fine and they liked what he was saying and they marveled at what he was saying, as he continues to speak the true message, they begin to become upset. They refuse to listen to what Jesus is saying anymore. And so the question is for us today, are we listening? <coughs> are we listening to the true message of Jesus Christ or are we listening to those messages that satisfy our prejudices, satisfy our political ideas, satisfy our specific wants. So what is the message of Jesus? In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus uses, uses the stories of the prophets Elijah and Elisha, and Elisha to make his point about the message that God wants his people to hear. And so as we turn back to the Gospel of Luke, fourth chapter, verse 25, we read, But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, Gentile country. If you don't recognize this, this woman's a Gentile. She's not a Jew. Send it to a, a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha. And none of them were cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian, another Gentile. There were all kinds of Jewish lepers. But Elisha only heals a Gentile. As the synagogue crowd hears Jesus say these words, they go from curious <coughs> to respectful to agitated to downright irate. <laughs> and why is that? It is because Jesus is reminding them of God's true message. He is reminding them of the message that God is not just the God of the Jews, but that God is the God of all people who will come to him in Jesus Christ. That God does not separate between Jew and Gentile, but that God accepts every person. And so do we, as modern day followers of Jesus Christ, still understand that message? Or have we changed it to fit our own needs? The message of Jesus Christ is that God wants all people to be saved. That God has no barriers. That God makes no exceptions. That anyone who comes to faith in Christ shall be saved. As St. Paul tells us in Galatians 3.28, speaking of the kingdom of heaven, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. All one. You don't care if you're American, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Filipino, Thailand, Vietnam, 
Jordanian, Lebanon, Israeli, Iraqi, from Iran, from Afghanistan, from all the countries of Africa, South America, and Central America, for all the islands in the world, and the seas of our world, God doesn't care about that. All he cares is that you come to him through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. He doesn't care about your race, creed, color, ethnic origin, your financial level, or your educational level, or your skill level. All he cares about is that we are one in Christ Jesus. That we are all open or all have that invitation from God to be part of his people. This is the first part of the message of Jesus. That everyone is welcome to the kingdom. Everyone is welcome into the church of Jesus Christ. And that there are to be no distinctions. And yet, today, it's often the church that puts up more distinctions and separation than society does. Some of you may have been involved, and so you're familiar with this, others of you may not, this may come as a total shock to you. But back when we had still the old LCA and the ALC and the AELC, and we were having talks about merging into what eventually became the ELCA, which we are today. One question they sent out to all the clergy and to all the congregations was their feelings on goals and quotas and spots being set aside specifically for this group or that group or whatever. Overwhelmingly, all three groups rejected the ideas of goals and quotas. Instead, the overall, the majority opinion was that as St. Paul tells us, as Jesus is telling us in our gospel today, that in the church there is no identification, there is no separation. We're all one in Christ Jesus. So the worst thing a church can do is pigeonhole people in different uh, spots because of race, creed, gender, or whatever. Yet when the ELCA was formed, that's exactly what we got on this Council of the ELCA, there are certain spots reserved for people whose primary language is in English. There are spots reserved for women. There are spots reserved for women of color. There are spots reserved for people of uh, different genders. There are spots reserved for people who um, come from uh, other traditions. Everything is done by male, female, black, white, red, yellow, brown. Not by who's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Not like we, what we see in Scripture where people are looked for who are filled with the Holy Spirit and demonstrate that they have the gifts to fulfill that responsibility for which they are looking. Or which needs to be filled. In Christ we are all one. That is the message of Jesus. God wants everyone to be saved, no matter these pigeonholes that we put on. And so ever since the ELC has been formed, it has seen a continual decline year after year after year as people become frustrated with these goals and quotas. But as you can't be elected in this office because you're a white male and this year, it has to be a female of color elected to this office. Or you can't be elected to this office because you're a white female and we must have someone whose primary language is other than English. That's not the way we see God running his church in Scripture. And so is the message being lost? Are we not proclaiming the message that in Jesus Christ all are one and therefore God reaches out to all people no matter who they might be? The church should represent the society in which it lives. One of the first songs we learned as children in Sunday school, after Jesus loves me, and B-I-B-L-E, that's a little for me, the third song was, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. 
Jesus loves the little children of the world. We need to put that into action. We need to put that in action so that every congregation of the Lord Jesus Christ represents the area in which it is, so that the congregation is made up of people of all types, of races, creeds, colors, genders, financial uh, income level, educational income level, or lack of skill level, or lack of. None of those should be barriers. But instead, the door should be open to each and every child. Each and every person who wishes salvation in Jesus Christ. After all, this is the church of Jesus Christ. He sets the rules we don't. And his rule is that everyone is to be accepted who will believe in him. The second message that oftentimes is overlooked today, and in some cases intentionally pushed under the carpet, is that to deny the message of Jesus Christ can bring dire consequences. Elijah and Elisha were sent to Israel and Judah to proclaim the message of the Lord. The Lord was not happy with Israel and Judah. They were worshiping false gods. They were allowed pagan practices to enter into their culture and their society. God told them through the prophets to repent, but they would refuse to repent. And so because they would not listen to the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 722 B.C., God sent the Assyrians to crush the northern kingdom of Israel. And in 586 B.C., he sent the Babylonians to crush Judea and Jerusalem, to burn the temple, tear down the temple, and carry the people off into exile for some 70 years on the banks of the Euphrates. So the message is that yes, Jesus is open to all people. Jesus wants all people to be saved, but if you're going to reject his message, if you're going to stop up your ears and not listen, as the people did in our gospel lesson for today, then there are consequences. And there are consequences you will not like. That you will not want to suffer. So we must share the good news. We must listen to what Jesus says. We must accept what Jesus says. We must incorporate in our daily life what Jesus says. If we do not wish to suffer like Israel and Jew. We have the choice. We make the choice. The choice to accept the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And the third thing he teaches us in our gospel lesson today is that he will try. The people become so upset with Jesus, they think they can do away with him. So we read, when they heard these things, all of the synagogue were filled with wrath. That means they were filled with rage and indignation. And they rose up and drove him out of the town. That word drove means to eject, to eject, to expel, to send away. They thought they could do away with Jesus. They take him to the brow of the cliff on which this town is located with the idea of throwing him down. But instead Jesus just turns around and walks through the midst of them and away from the town and on to his journey. For centuries people have tried to kill the word of Jesus Christ. For centuries people have tried to destroy the church. But as we've seen century after century, the blood of the martyr, martyrs is the seed of the church. And where the church is persecuted, it grows in leaps and bounds. Where the church is protected, where the church is safe, it has a tendency to become complacent and stagnant and lose that evangelistic zeal, lose that zeal to share with others the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share with others that saving grace of Jesus Christ, to fail to, full, to carry out that great commission that Jesus gave us that we go to all nations so that everyone, every race, creed, color, and ethnic group may be part of the community of faith and the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. People have tried to destroy the church, but because Jesus triumphed, the church always triumphs. And that is a message that sometimes is forgotten, that Jesus triumphed. We know the end of the story. That's what the book of Revelation is all about. If 
It's about the end of the story that Christ has triumphed. Yes, the church would go through persecution. There would be horrible persecution. The church, many Christians would be uh, the victims of all kinds of horrible things happening to them. And we've seen that from the beginning of the church till today. But the church triumphs because Jesus Christ has triumphed. Jesus Christ has slain the dragon. Jesus Christ, through his death upon the cross, through his blood paying the debt of sin that we owe, by his atonement, by his being our redeemer, he has triumphed over sin, death, and the power of the devil and gives us that same victory through our faith in him. Through his resurrection and ascension, he assures us of that thing. Things may be dark for a while, Things may look out of control, but Jesus is trying. And in the end, there will be nothing but the glory of Jesus trying. And so the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, that message which needs to be heard today and spread from village to village, town to town, city to city, island to island, country to country, that message is that God wants all people to be saved through Jesus that all, God wants all people to be part of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That God wants all people to be part of the congregation and community of faith in Jesus Christ. The message is that if you ignore this message of salvation, then you suffer the consequences. Not because God is mean, not because God is evil, not because God is harsh, but because you made the choice. He knocked and knocked and knocked upon your heart. Asked you to come in. Asked you to be saved through the blood of the Lamb. You're the one that turned it down. You're the one that rejected it. And in the final part of the message today, that Jesus has indeed triumphed. Although evil may seem to triumph for a little while. Although it may be dark, there'll be joy in the morning. There'll be joy in the morning because nothing can overcome the death, resurrection, This is a message we need to proclaim. It is up to us now. We're the Peters, the Pauls, the James, the Andrews, the Johns. We're the Apollos. We're the Barnabases. We're the St. Luke's. We're the Timothys and the Titus. And all those the early church heroes we read about, we now have that responsibility. The message of Jesus Christ must continue to be proclaimed. And the true message must continue to be proclaimed to all the world. God loves us all and wants us all to be saved. Jesus has tried. Do not suffer the results of rejecting this triumph and love. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Please turn to page 105 in the front of your worship book. And I invite those who can do so without difficulty to stay up. <coughs> With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting.
Intercessory prayers are so long today. That's that you remain seated, but then those who came to stand for the Lord's prayer in the benedict. The Lord promises, I am with you to deliver you. So let us pray to him with faith in Christ and confidence in his mercy. Our response being, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, in your righteousness deliver us and rescue us. Incline your ear to us and save us. Be our rock of refuge. Forgive our sins, especially the phony acts that we try to pass off as real love. Enable us to reflect your love that is patient and kind, does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, and does not insist on its own way. Fill our lives with good works that truly care for others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you have baptized us into the death and resurrection of your Son. Renew each of us in baptismal faith. Grant to us a mature Christianity that does not speak, think, or reason like a child, but puts away childish ways as we grow in faith, hope, and especially love. Prevent us from rejoicing in wrongdoing and teach us to rejoice in the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, bless our nation and community. Protect our civil leaders from harm and direct their decisions so that we and people everywhere can enjoy your good gifts in this world and serve you in peace. Defend the unborn and all those whose lives are threatened. Guard the members of our military and comfort them with the promise of your presence. Grant relief to those suffering the effects of natural and man made calamities. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, give steadfast faith and confident courage to Christians who are being persecuted, especially those who are asked to sacrifice their lives for you and for the gospel. Rescue them from the hands of the wicked, from the grasp of unjust and cruel people. Focus their eyes and our eyes back to your cross and empty tomb, as well as forward to resurrection life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, your son laid his hand on those with disease and healed them. So we beg you to heal those we love. Come to the aid of all who are sick or suffering. Comfort all who mourn. Cast demons out of those who are afflicted. To all people who are struggling in life, grant both faith in Christ and peace in the midst of their troubles. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we praise you for all those who lived and died with faith in Christ and now rest in your presence. Unite us with your Son and with those saints. Grant to us repentant hearts as we receive your gifts and strengthen us to care for the needs of others, the way our Savior Jesus cared for the people around him and cares for us today. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you are our hope and our trust. Be not far from us. Make haste to help us and all those for whom we pray. For we plead for your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered in the one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you now and forever. Amen. Conclude our worship with hymn number 774, Leading on the Everlasting Arms. Hymn number 774.
Thanks be to God.